Look at all that RB goodness. All right, guys, welcome back to this week's vlog. Um, all right, many of you guys have been asking me about the pros and cons and uh, how the car drives after the, uh, I guess, the, in the installation of all the uh, SPL parts and the control arms and stuff like that. So we're gonna go with my good friend here, uh, Ramos, and then uh, take a go for uh, a quick drive and then we'll discuss, um, I guess, all the pros and cons and all the noises and that's associated with the, uh, the upgrades here, all right? So let's get in the car. All right, guys, we're inside the car. We're gonna get started here. We're gonna let it warm up a little bit and uh, I'm gonna get uh, start talking. How's the seats? Good. Good day. You need yeah. it back more or no? No, nope, this is perfect. Yeah, these are the uh, the R triple eight R's. So the uh, revision of the R triple eight. So you don't have that humming noise anymore. I used to have that on my other car. Yeah, it was really annoying. Yeah. All right, guys. So hopefully the audio is pretty good. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me because the exhaust in here is uh, quite loud. Cost race car. <laughs> So it's, uh, if you're kind of wondering what kind of exhaust I have in here, it's a uh, HKS uh, Catalyst downpipe with a steel-in midpipe and a steel-in um, axle back. So it's pretty much straight piped all the way through. Uh, it breathes and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty loud when you're uh, wide open throttle. So far there's not many clunks though. You do hear that in the... Um the road more and uh, yeah, what what is doing? That's for sure. You can hear the suspension. Grab, yeah, grab the, uh, the weight. Yeah, you can feel <laughs> <laughs> like like go kart. Yeah, yeah. And this is basically in right now. The settings I have right now is in race mode for the traction and the. Right. Uh, the uh, transmission yeah and then for the suspension I have it in just normal mode right now so it, it feels quite stiff right yeah. this is not even in race mode no. I know when I put it in comfort mode I tried it today on the way home big difference you can feel the feel the difference right away well usually the bushings take a lot of that impact and now that you've gone to yeah. ball bearing types is you know you get that feel of like like go car yeah no more give, right? No more give, man. Let's go. Sounds really nice, the exhaust. I like it. See, I I, I like that. Yeah, I think the new GTRs, they, they paddles are on the steering, steering wheel, right? Yeah. I definitely like that better. So initially, what are, you, what are your thoughts? What do you, what do you think? Um, with the SPL spherical bearings and all the control arms and the traction control arms and all that other stuff that we changed into. Well, I, I definitely like to feel what the car and the road is doing. So this is something that I enjoy, like is my type of driving. Like if you're going for comfort, definitely this is not what you want to yeah. do. But if you want to have that aggressive, you know, driving where you want to throw the car around and do some track and you want it to be responsive, this is this is really yeah. really good this is what you want like you can actually feel yeah, what the road is doing and you know what the car is doing and, and i'm sure the input and the steering yeah. is much better right i know you can feel a little bit of the vibration transfer from the uh the front right right rack. you can hear it there's yeah, no bushings now right yeah, you can feel it yeah so bushing sometimes so yeah. if you're wondering there is a little bit of vibrations in the steering wheel from the uh, control arms First time, right? For you, right? First, first, first pull on the GTR, and that's not even that's not us launching it. No, <laughs> that's not launching. Is that just uh, straight gears? Just straight gears. Just open throttle. That's it. Yeah. It's 
sounds really nice. I like the exhaust. You kind of get that weird feeling when the hit boost yeah. hits, right? Oh yeah. Pulls you back in the seat. Did you get that feeling in your uh, in your Evo? No, definitely it's different. It's it's an aggressive pull, but not not, not the type that puts you on this in the back of the seat. No. Nothing you just do right there. Eh? <coughs> Hopefully, it should be okay. No, maybe we should warm up the tires a bit. Eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. We're gonna, maybe we don't oh, worry. yeah. You'll we'll probably just spin them there. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Or maybe on the way back. Oh, yeah. Responsiveness. Yeah. It's very nimble. It's very and, uh, I guess all that hard work is actually, you know, I think it's it's, it's worth it. You know, pays off and it's very enjoyable. Cause yeah, it, like it's, it, it feels really tight, very responsive. You know, and you're still on OEM Correct. struts, right? Yeah, just just springs. Yeah, and and you know, so for it to do that amazing transformation on uh, OEM. You know, dampening suspension, that's pretty impressive to be honest. Yeah, this actually feels like you're like I'm driving on my all in coilover yeah. system. Yeah. It's wow. Like it's like it's, it's it is day and night, you guys. Yeah. Like it's if you're a track enthusiast and want to do the be that weekend warrior and take your car out to the track, spherical bearings, solid bushings is the way to go. Like it's major difference around the corners. Nice. That blip to sound yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> but so far it's okay, eh? Like yeah. all the um you there's no like hard to tell if there's anything nope. loose or anything nope. in the back. No, right? no, it feels good. And you know what's impressive that um you you can have the comfort of your OEM suspension when you want it and you know, you can change it up and it's just, it's like a day and night feel to it. It's pretty impressed with it actually. <laughs> because it's a feel that you get from, from coilovers, you know what I mean? So just to let you guys know, like, I'm on stock suspensions with a set of H&R lowering springs and major difference. Like it's, again, it's, this, the car itself is pretty stiff and ready, but now with all the, that, no more rubber bushings, a uh, set of lowering springs, makes it just feel like it's just solid, just stiff. I guess this will be also be a really good upgrade for guys that wish to keep the dampening features and stuff like that on your OEM system. Yeah. I mean, it, it does a day and night um, change on it. Now imagine what it would do if you were to put an actual coilover suspension with this yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it might be too stiff for my liking maybe, you know? Because yeah. for me, this is like perfect. This is it's crazy. It actually feels like I'm driving in my Evo with my all-in suspension. Yeah. And, and this car is heavy. Correct. You know, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And keep in mind, I did switch out. I went from the white line sway bars, front and back. I switched them uh, out to the uh, Forge Performance uh, sway bars and the end links too. So they're quite a bit bigger. Um, again, very noticeable. It's a lot quieter because I greased them up. The white lines made a lot of noise when I went over uh, 
let's say a curb or uh, drive into my driveway, it made a lot of noise and then it's just kind of annoying. So I kind of got rid of those, you guys. How did the new um, alignment? It's uh, yeah, Marcos works. did a he did a fantastic job. I guess it dialed in pretty good. doesn't sound that as noisy as I would have thought it would be you know having solid that race, you know, race, yeah you know not having any bushes to you know take away some of that give and pounding from the road right just in case you guys know Edmonton roads nasty like our government needs to do a better job with the roads and yeah wow, I thought it would be like much noisier right but, uh, it is pretty solid, eh? Yeah, I can feel like all the gum and all the input and everything, but definitely not not clunky noisy or anything like that, like I would expect it to be, right? How fast have you got around here? 100. 100, eh? With, with the Q60. Yeah. With the E1, they don't have Right with yeah. your car suspension, just you know what I mean. That's really nice. You know they have that uh, the transmission clunking and stuff like that, but it's not too bad. Right? No. Honestly, so far I've been pretty happy with it, and I don't have that bell housing problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, knock on wood. Right, right. Um, it's been pretty solid since since the day I bought it. So, yeah. how many kilometers on it now? Uh, this one's fifty-one. Oh. Yeah, it just hit fifty-one. Yeah, you know I'm. Um, just like the evils right like a lot of people complain in the mrs with the with the clock in the transmission but i never heard it in mine before and the gtrs i guess they clunk too but i don't hear it i don't hear nothing have you heard one clunk before no i'm just still wondering what they really it's sound a, like your average your normal noises from the uh the forks and stuff yeah, engaging yeah. and right right but other than that it's it's a wicked transmission though man i i dare anybody to try to beat it right like uh i come from a manual world too and like when i drove the twin clutch system i was like this is the bounce right 
that's that's he doesn't even like literally like no body roll. Yeah, yeah, no body roll. No like body it's roll. just it's overall how much to spend for the whole kit if you mind me asking. So the overall investment for the parts itself with all the control arms, the uh, minus the front control, upper control arms, because that wasn't included in the bill. Um, it was roughly about six, oh, yeah, oh. six thousand Canadian. Canadian. Yeah, without installation. Right, right. That's with the upper control arms. Without the upper control arms. If you were to put the upper controllers, uh, it's another twenty some hundred dollars Canadian. So you're looking about eight thousand dollars, eight thousand in SPL parts. So if you were to put coilover suspension, how much would that cost on the GTR? Like if you were to go to KWs or Oaklands yeah. or something like that. So yeah, Oaklands and KW, I believe, is roughly around the six thousand dollar range. Six thousand, yeah. Yeah, unless you want to go into uh, JR, JRZs, JRZs are at least. Ten grand. Imagine yeah. that. Not installed. Not installed. And to me, like what you spend here, I thought is like amazing for the field that you get because, like I'm saying, coilover suspension usually this is what feels like, right? Yeah. So, and, and, and I, I think if you were to go with a coilover suspension, it still wouldn't feel this. Yeah. Like the way it inputs is pretty crazy, right? So you put 10 grand, let's say you were to go with the KWs or something like that, and you were to spend eight grand, you know, and then put on top of this, that's that's a lot of money. And what and you, you did here. And you guys gotta keep in mind, you go and you spend six, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on suspensions. You got a, quite a weapon, but the only problem is you got to know how to dial that in. If you don't know how to dial that suspension and that suspension is really no good to you, you can't just right. install it and expect it to perform to its top potential. You got to know how to dial it in. And unfortunately, most guys don't have a suspension guy that will be able to, uh, you know, help you dial it in or you're track oriented or dedicated to the track, right? And I don't know, just, I don't know if your the average guy or track enthusiast might know how to dial it in, but you're not gonna dial it every time you go and drive on the street because the street is not the same as a track. The track stays the same. Right, right. Right, it's static, right? Right. But on your street here, potholes might show up, and a bump here and there. So you, that suspension might be good for one set of streets that you right. drive on, but it might not be good for the other streets. Right, right. And um. The other thing too is if you remove the OEM suspension, you have to do a modification to. Yeah, you have to do a delete kit, and I believe that's like nine hundred dollars Canadian so it's another for the delete kit. Right. Yeah. So to me, you know, this is the best. You know, um, how much do you think you said you spend? Uh, roughly about six thousand Canadian. Six thousand Canadian. Yeah, this, without. let's say, would be the best six thousand dollars you ever spend in this car yeah. right now. Like. I'm blown away like the way it feels like the, the the suspension the OEM suspension with you lowering springs and, and this uh this upgrade it's pretty impressive wow all right guys so to recap it all it was quite a bit of um I guess work to put it, to get it put on it took just myself and without help of my good friends especially Aramis here there's no way I would have got it done by myself, especially pressing the bushings in and stuff like that. So it is a couple of weekends for sure job. Um, you got to get a great alignment guy to know how to dial that in for you. But once everything's set and done, it's well worth it, you guys. Like the payoff is uh, well worth it. I get the, the, the cons of it. Yeah, you get a little bit more vibrations, some more noise. But you know what? You're driving a GTR. That's uh, I guess that's the least of your worries. <laughs> you don't buy this car for comfort. No, you buy this car to speed and and have fun with it. But I mean, I, I where I feel about it, if you can get the benefits of your of this suspension with what you did, and have somewhat a nice drive to Calgary, why not, right? Yeah. You know, but it's it's amazing. Yeah, definitely. Because at the end of the day, all that road noise you won't even hear because if you're gonna do all that stuff to your suspension, I'm pretty sure you'll have downpipes and uh, an aftermarket exhaust, so you won't even hear that that noise. So, all right. 
So hands up, two thumbs up for uh, SPL parts. Uh, kudos to you guys. You guys did a fantastic job on all you guys' parts and stuff like that. And again, I do recommend it. Um, if you want to take your GTR to the next level, hit up SBL, get those parts put in. And also, uh, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. All right, guys. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, by the way, we're going to figure out what that clicking noise is coming from the uh, front car of the car when you turn the uh, corner. Not coming from the brakes, not from that pin, because I already put the uh, extra clips in to uh, stop the rattling from the pin. But there's another noise that is only when you turn. So we're going to figure that out in the next video. All right, guys. See you guys then.